El Benigno. In the words of Robert Parker, Spain's gift to the world of wine. Back in 2001, when we announced to the world that we were going to open up our own Level 3 quarantine, we called for expressions of interest. And some of the first people to approach us were Doug and Delwyn Bell, local vignerons right here in Gisborne. They'd spent some time in Spain, had tasted Albarino, wine made from Albarino, and were very impressed uh, with the ability for this variety to handle uh, wet conditions and, and be very tolerant of um, botrytis pressure. So we, we tracked down a very good source of this material from a, a vineyard selection in Spain, put it into our quarantine program, and that um, came out of quarantine ready for bulking up in about 2006, I think it was. Coincidentally, right about that time, the Australians who had already imported Albarino some 10 years before and had now planted over 300 hectares, discovered that in fact they didn't have Albarino. Um, they were making wine, they were selling it as, as Albarino, and it was being very well received in the Australian market. But it turned out, in fact, it was a, a totally different variety called Sauvignon Blanc. Don't confuse that with Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc from Jura in the east of France, which is a non-aromatic yellow style um, wine. Very, very different to Albarino. So we were obviously a little concerned to make sure that if the Australian um, industry had mucked this one up, we wanted to make sure we did have the real deal. We took samples, put them through our laboratory, Linnaeus laboratory for DNA testing, and then for further clarification, uh, sent them to Antav uh, in Montpellier in France. So we were very relieved to discover that, and yes, in fact, our original import was indeed Albarino, the real deal. Let's go and have a look at it. So Nick, can you tell us if what we're seeing on the vines here of Albarino, uh, the qualities that Doug and Delwyn saw in Spain, has that come through in the selection that we've imported? Early days uh, for Albarino in New Zealand, but as you can see from the bunches, exactly what uh, Doug and Delwyn are talking about, very, very loose bunches, uh, quite productive. Um, you know, there's a lot of bunches on there, as you can see, and very loose, no botrytis, and I think in terms of growing this, this variety, Albarino's timing-wise is probably a week to two weeks later than Chardonnay in terms of bud burst, uh, flowering, and, and probably harvest as well. So we're looking at um, a couple of weeks later than Chardonnay and very open, loose bunches that are resistant to botrytis. It's important to, to realise these vines are only in the, this is their first crop, so they're still young vines. Um, Having said that, what we've noticed, um, whenever we plant Albarino, it loves to run. It's quite a vigorous uh, variety, and they will, in the first year, we will get two or three shoots right up three and a half metres high up through our, our tall canopy. Nick, perhaps you can tell a little bit about, in terms of um, flavours, you know, sort of the wine style. Um, again, what Doug and Dale were looking for there, and what, you know, why Albarino is getting so much attention around the world. Mm. I think uh, very good acidity in this um, variety and I think that's going to be the key for New Zealand wines is crisp and acidic um, wines with um, good flavours of, of lime and I get a bit of pear um, flavours in there and I think that's going to be the key is making drier style um, wines with good acidity. Well that's our Spanish importation of Albarino and now we're going to have a look now at three clones that we imported from Plan Cell Nursery in Portugal. Interestingly, not a lot of clonal selection has been done in either Spain or Portugal over the years. Uh, Plant Cell Nursery has really led the way. We are now the New Zealand licensee for all of their, um, all of their varieties and clones. And let's go and have a look at them and just see if any, any differences or not from the Spanish selections. El Barreño from Portugal. We imported three clones from Plant Cell Nurseries, 635, 636 and 637. Nick, tell us what you're seeing here, any difference between the Spanish selection and the Portuguese selections? Well, uh, I've had a good look through uh, all the um, selections that we've got here and really not any major differences and very similar to the Spanish uh, selection as well. So again, very, very open bunches, um, very botrytis resistant and are looking very similar at the moment. They're all quite young vines. Um, 
but we, we've, we've had nearly 200 millimetres of rain in the last few weeks in Gisborne and there is absolutely no botrytis in any of these um, selections of Alberino. As you can see, very open bunches and quite tough skins, so very happy with that, Jeff. In terms of client uptake of this variety, apart from the people like the Bells, uh, who really saw it as very much suited to this region, interestingly we've, had, uh, we've sold vines the length and breadth of New Zealand, from Waiheke Island, just off the coast of Auckland, right down to Nelson and the Awatry Valley. And it's be interesting to see stylistically um, how this variety performs in those different regions. On a clonal, plant, on a clonal demand basis, most growers have chosen, to, have chosen to plant a range of clones. And if you look at the bells, is that planted the very first planting here in New, in New Zealand, planted half of the block in the Spanish selection, kept the other half of their block open um, for another year. And as soon as the first plants from plant cell selections came available, they filled up the rest of the block. And that's pretty much what we're seeing. The early adopters are saying, let's take a, um, let's spread our risk and let's see what we can do with this. The first couple of wines came out last year, I think just a barrel from the Arbitry Valley and a barrel, barrel from Gisborne. Um, so it is early days, but I think could be some pretty exciting wines coming out over the next few years.